Hello there, this is Vice Admiral Trevelyan, and welcome to my next DOS game. It's been a while since I've done a DOS game. Last time was the first Mega Man game in DOS, and as you guys could probably tell, that was a little bit of a difficult one, and it was difficult in more ways than one. But I successfully mastered that one, and I'm going to do something a little bit different that fits into my Star Trek uh, playthroughs for STO, but it's a little bit more retro than going and doing Infected Elite. It's going to be the Star Trek 25th Anniversary uh, CD-ROM game from Interplay that I'm going to be doing for my next DOS playthrough. And you're wondering, uh, why are you doing that one? That one's 25th Anniversary? That has to be, what, mm, 1990? Something like that? And you're right. It was around 1990-91 that the Star Trek 25th Anniversary came out, and it came out in a couple of systems, one of which was the NES, of course, and I think there was a Game Boy version, I'm not sure about that, but there was also a CD, well, first it was floppy disk, and then it came out in CD, and uh, it was basically a point-and-click adventure game, kind of like, um, you know, Monkey Island or King's Quest, that's how the PC game was set up. And the floppy game was basically standard ad-lib um, music with, uh, with about six complete levels and a seventh sort of rushed level. And then they re-released a little later on CD-ROM with a more fleshed out seventh level and speech. And if you're wondering, like, well, who's providing the speech? It's like all the original people are providing speech. You have Shatner in there. You have Nimoy in there. You have you. You even have Kelly, Forrest Kelly. Sorry about that, and James Doohan as Scotty as well. So you got uh, Forrest Kelly as as McCoy and Doohan as Scotty, and you got also the other people. Uh, you have uh, Walter doing Chekhov. You have Sulu. Well, it's Takai. Nichelle is uh, Uhura. All the original people are there. I don't think they have... They have a graphic of Ensign Kyle there. Or is it Lieutenant Kyle? Ensign or Lieutenant Kyle? Whatever. I I like Star Trek. I'm not an uber fan. I just, you know, I respect the big the big uh, sci-fi series out there. But uh, I think it's Lieutenant Kyle. and But he, they don't have any talky lines in there for, for Kyle. But he, you can see him in there. He beams you down all the time. Kind of like uh, what O'Brien does in Star Trek Next Generation. He, they have him doing that in this game. So, with uh, that little intro there, let's get started. I type in Star Trek from DOSBox. R-E-K. Yes, my skills of English have not failed me. Also, I'm using a specialized sound font to make the music in the game sound a little bit better. And... Yeah, I think that's about... Oh, and I'm also using a new graphics filter. Well, I don't know. No, it's not a new graphics filter. It's the same uh, same graphics filter I was using for the Mega Man video. The um, It's the BRZ fil graphics filter. So anyway, that's an, this is enough looking at a black screen. Let's get going. We'll do the first combat, and then... Well, let's see where, what happens after that. And I'll be quiet so you can listen to... Shatner speaks, since he's obviously much higher pay grade than I am. Okay, we know your interplay. Come on. Space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its mission? To explore strange new worlds to discover new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Sort of more of a Jamaican version of the theme here, but whatever. That's what, uh, that's what the, that's what I got it set up for. It's not too bad. Oh, Michael Stackpole is in the design. Interesting. He's done some stuff for sure. But yeah, there's a few names here that I can definitely recognize for sure. I mean, aside from the stars, obviously, so. 
All right, let's get to it. Demon World. Though the Enterprise's primary mission is peaceful exploration, the galaxy holds many surprises. To be prepared, we are conducting a mock battle with the USS Republic. Hmm, okay. Captain Patterson reports the Republic is in position and ready to begin, Captain. Alrighty. The Republic is arming weapons and raising shields. I suggest we do the same, Captain. Yeah, that seems like a pretty cool idea. Raising shields. S key. Arming weapons. W key. Target analysis on. All right, now if we hit the A button, we can get their damage instead of our damage. Oh, you ran away? That was a bad idea. Target analysis off. Target Looks analysis like he nailed off. us a little bit too. That's not good. Okay, I'm going to need to slow down a little bit so I get this character my spin size. Computer estimates the Republic is crippled, Captain. All right, goody. Captain Patterson extends his congratulations, sir. Lowering shields and disarming weapons. All right. Message coming in from Starfleet. On screen, Lieutenant. Okay. Jim, the Enterprise is ordered to travel to Pollux 5. The natives report that alien life forms have been attacking the settlers near a mine at Mount Idol. You are to report to the High Prelate of the colony. The settlers are members of the Acolytes of the Star set. The description of the attackers vary, but all say that the attackers resemble creatures from many Earth religions known as demons. Starfleet wants you to determine the nature of these creatures and to resolve the situation without bringing harm to the colonists. Starfleet out. Okay, what does Spock have to say about this? And we hit T to talk to Spock. I advise referring to the star map and setting a course for the Pollux system, sir. Well, I can't argue with that logic. Now, this is a cool feature that uh, this game had, is you can actually access the ship's computer and type in subjects and cool stuff comes up. So, uh, let's do an example here, not game-related. Type in... Well, why not? K A A N. I think that's how you spell it. Topic not available, Captain. Okay, I misspelled it. Okay, K A K N. Must have been dyslexia talking there. Topic not available, Captain. You serious? You just rip that stuff out of there. And... Puh. Okay. How about somebody who's actually on the ship? Spock. Full name. Uncodable in English language. First officer of the USS Enterprise. Spock is one of the finest science officers in Starfleet and has been awarded numerous Starfleet and Federation decorations. Well, it sounds like he wrote that himself. Hmm. How about Doomsday Machine? Topic not available, Captain. Really? Yeah, you'd think you'd have some stuff about other th other things in the series. Hmm. Interesting. Tribble. Tribbles. Discovered by Cyrano Jones on a planet whose location is unknown. These charming animals have with some alterations, become a favorite pet on many Federation planets. And I guess they didn't have anything else to say about it except in the text here, which I will complete. They project empathic waves that stimulate the brain's pleasure centers in most known humanoids, although they irritate the Klingon brain. Their rapid reproduction requires old triples to be fixed before any sale may occur. Well, of course, in Trouble Tribbles that didn't happen, but... Okay, so let's look up where we're actually going to be going today, which is the Pollux Star System. Pollux 5 System. An inhabited satellite of Pollux B. Pollux 5 has lately emerged from an ice age caused by large meteor strikes. 
It has recently been colonized by the acolytes of the star's religious sect. The planet is home to a wide variety of plant life, but insects and other lower life forms are the only known animals. Okay. What about the acolytes? A C O L Y T. Acolytes. Fully acolytes of the stars. Inspired by old human religions, the acolytes of the stars are a group of deists that have colonized several worlds in this quadrant. The acolytes prefer a relatively primitive lifestyle reminiscent of the mid 21st century Earth rural communities. Acolyte missionaries regularly assist nearby Federation worlds during times of need or disaster. Major acolyte settlements are Nicolasi on Pollux 5, Germania on Maddox 2, and Kentigern on Haven's World. Hmm. Well, those would all be interesting to look up, but let's look up Nicolasi. N I K O L A S I. Nicolasi, chief colony of the acolytes of the star's religious sect, with over 1,000 members. Nicolasi is isolationist by Federation standards, but has assisted disaster relief teams and geologic surveys. It is led by Robert Angevin. Hmm. Okay, yeah, you repeated that time twice in the text, but sure. Robert Angevin. I don't know how to spell Robert, but A N G I then. Oopsie. Yes, you can go backwards on your thing here, on the text, which is handy. Robert Angevin. Fully. High Prelate Robert Everett Angevin. As High Prelate of the Acolytes of the Stars. See Acolytes. On Nicolasi, Robert Angevin serves as political and spiritual leader for that religious colony. Angevin is the acting Federation contact on that world and is considered by Federation diplomats to be a fair and capable leader. Well, that's a change because most of the time the Federation diplomats try to decide anything, they usually screw it up. So, let's see if they got it right this time. Alright, exit out, and I'm going to look at my star map real quick. I actually got the, it's sort of odd, I have the floppy version of this game in addition to the CD version of this game. I bought the CD version later, but I got the floppy version with the interplay 25th anniversary edition. So uh, I actually had both versions of the game. Obviously, I thought a talky version would be more interesting to people. But um, it has the star map. <coughs> Pardon me, I just coughed. Again. I hate being sick or recovering from illness. And you may think, oh, cool, we can go places. It's like, yeah, you can go places, but this is also a very. Well, I wouldn't say sophisticated, but interesting form of copy protection. So, I will look up the star system for Pollux 5, and we'll go there. And, if, by the way, if you screw up going to any of these star systems, uh, Klingons and Romulans attack you. Also, Space Pirates, specifically, not Alashi, no, that's STO, but uh, Alasi. I know, they sound similar, but anyway, let me wait one moment while I look up the correct star system. Alright, I'm back guys, and I figured out that the correct star system from the star chart is this one right here, so I'll click on that and we will go to a happy place. We have arrived at Pollux 5. Mm-hmm, and the warp effect was only slightly worse than what Cryptic has in SEO. Right, let's hail them. Press H for hail. Message from High Prelate Robert Angevin, sir. Cool. Welcome, Enterprise. The High Prelate awaits you. Please, beam down and meet with him. Okay. Well, as far as looks goes, I give you a 4 out of 10. We are too far from the planet for a sensor probe, Captain. Okay, well, let's hit O to orbit. 
Hey, we have orbited. Standard orbit. Oh my, thank you, Sulu. Pollux 5 has recently emerged from an ice age, sir. It's spring at the moment. Cool, but tolerable. Sensors indicate previously documented flora and fauna. Nothing unusual. Okay, cool, cool. So, it looks like that this planet is pretty non-hostile, at least, unless the sensors are screwed up, which of course, because it's Star Trek, is always a possibility. And I'm going to save the game here by hitting K, going to the little beam-up thing. Uh, well, not the beam-up thing, but the little badge thing. Hitting save. Save new game. Save new game. T-R-E-V-1. Trev1. And... I'm going to cut the recording here and I'm going to do something interesting because you're scored on these missions, okay? If you do things which are screw-ups, you get dinged in your final score. If you do things absolutely by the book, you get a full score at the end of the mission. And while it's fun to do a full score and I can do it because I beat this game you know, dozens of times, I think it would be fun to do something concurrent where people could either watch the perfect version or the imperfect version. The reason I want to do the imperfect version here is mainly because of Shatner's dialogue. Shatner has a lot of dialogue in this one, obviously, since he's the player character. Kirk is the player character. So... What I think would be interesting to do is have one where Shatner is basically even more perfect than he is in the television show, which would be one recording I would release in a day, and then I would have the alternate version where basically it has Kirk at his absolutely most sociopathic and socially unacceptable behavior because he has some really funny lines. <laughs> as a jerk. So, yeah, we're gonna have Kirk as an angel and Kirk as a jerk. And I think I'm going to be doing both of the videos in a day, and I'm going to also do, like, a little recap thing at the beginning of each video so people understand, you know, well, I know you guys aren't goldfish, but, you know, so people understand what the purpose of this video is. So, and I'll also have a link so you can go to the other video if you want to, you know, see the ultimate version. So it's gonna be basically, like, uh, mirror universe stuff. So, in any event, I think we'll leave it off here. You can, you basically have seen how you control things in Star Trek 25th Anniversary in space, and I think that's a good point to leave off on this video. I'm by Sam Trevelyan, and we'll be back with two videos next time on the Star Trek 25th Anniversary special. Well, it's not the 25th anniversary, it's way past that, but you know what I mean.